Where's the echo? That's my daughter, Alev. She is not happy that I disconnected our Alexa or that she couldn't watch the only three movies she loves in the whole wide world, Coco, Monsters, Inc., and The Incredibles, all of which we watch either through Netflix or videos purchased via Amazon. Coco, Coco, Coco. <laughs> so why did I put her through this misery? Because I decided to block the five tech giants from my life one week at a time. Of course, that explanation means nothing to my one-year-old. Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft collectively make products that we love. Products that we hate but can't stop using. Products that dictate how we communicate and how we are seen. Their devices and services make our lives both easier than they've ever been before and more complicated in unforeseen ways. Um, yeah, not us, bud. Their offerings have replaced core functions of our brains. Here's your reminder. Laura says the teething ring is in the freezer. And people are increasingly worried that it's as possible to get addicted to these buttons, clicks, screens, and scrolls as it is to get hooked on nicotine or heroin. I wanted this to be more than just a boycott. I wanted to cut these companies from my life as completely as possible, including turn. all the invisible ways in which I might interact with them. For example, if you're watching this on gizmodo.com right now, your device is invisibly interacting with Amazon, Facebook, and Google. As far as I know, this kind of an experiment hasn't been done before, and I didn't know how to do it. So I knew I would need to get help. Hello, my name is Drew Rokra. I am uh, helping Cash build the backend system that prevents her devices from reaching out to all these tech giants. Drew built a virtual private network for me, and I directed all of my devices to send their internet traffic through it. It was as if my devices were hanging out in a fancy club, and Drew was the bouncer who decided which data got to come mingle with them. When I'm blocking a particular tech giant, Dhruv turns away any data from that company trying to get in, even if my devices had invited them. Dhruv was able to do this because all the tech giants publish a list of the internet protocol addresses they own, which is basically like a list of directions to the servers they control. The VPN blocked my devices from talking to those servers. It wasn't a perfect blockade though, as some of the companies basically had fake IDs and managed to get into the club and make moves on my devices. I'll tell you more about that later. Setting up the parameters of the block alone gives you a sense of how massive these companies are and how much of the internet they each control. Amazon controls 23,219,968 IP addresses. I started the experiment out with the company that I thought would be the hardest to cut out of my life, the everything store. So it's day one of my month long tech blockade. We use a lot of Amazon products in our house. We've got an Echo, an Echo Dot, two Kindles, two Amazon Prime credit cards, Amazon Prime Video on our TV, and two Prime accounts on Amazon.com itself. I know, I know, it's kind of ridiculous that both my husband and I are paying 119 a year for two Prime accounts. This exercise made me look back at how much I usually spend on Amazon, and I alone am averaging about $3,000 a year. I get all my, usually like all my birthday presents there, all my Christmas presents there. Anytime I need anything, I basically go to Amazon first, and not even Amazon.com, I just go to the Amazon app on my phone. Yes, I have Amazon's app on my phone. I'm so addicted to this company, it's insane. And I'm not alone. Amazon reportedly controls 50% of online commerce, which means half of all purchases made online in America, which is insane. And Amazon's footprint is much bigger if you think of all the companies that operates that don't prominently display its logo, including Amazon Web Services or AWS, the vast server network that provides the backbone for much of the internet. There's also Twitch.com, the broadcasting behemoth that is the backbone of the online game industry. And of course, there's Whole Foods, the organic backbone of the yuppie diet. I hear you have a degree in cheese. I do, I went to cheese school. AWS is the internet's largest cloud provider, generating almost seven billion in revenue per quarter, which is the primary driver of Amazon's profitability. Halfway through the week, I started to wonder why so many sites that use AWS were still working for me. For example, I was able to do some searches for a Thanksgiving vacation home on Airbnb, 
despite it being a famed user of Amazon's hosting platform. That's how Dhruv and I discovered a major flaw in our blocking technique. Hey, Dhruv. How's it going? Hey. hey. So this is working then? It's yeah. Good. We ran into some situations where the blocker didn't seem to be working 100%. That there were some Amazon kind of base services that were getting through. And that's, I guess, another interesting part, uh, part of this puzzle is that, like, yeah, I, uh, Amazon has published their IP addresses, and that's what we're using to block this stuff. But, like, sometimes things get through, like Airbnb. We were blocking IP addresses that we knew Amazon and thus AWS use. But it turns out that a lot of sites, in addition to using a company like AWS, tend to employ a secondary service called a content delivery network to load their web pages faster. For me, the, the, the metaphor is like, like whack-a-mole sometimes. Like when I'm looking at your logs and I'm seeing traffic that shouldn't be going through, going through, I like find the IP address, like figure it out, like figure out why it's there and quickly make a block. Think of AWS as the central warehouse for a site's digital packets. The CDNs are the storefronts around the world that help people get the packets faster so that web visitors don't have to wait for the packets to come all the way from the warehouse. Amazon does run its own CDN called CloudFront, but it has fierce competitions from CDNs offered by other companies like Fastly and Cloudflare. If a website used AWS in combination with a non-Amazon CDN, my blocker would see the CDN's IP addresses and let that AWS hosted content slip through. This was a wrinkle in the experiment that we just couldn't engineer around. So I'm at the grocery store trying to buy size five diapers. Some of the challenges of life without Amazon are probably obvious. So we made it through the weekend without Amazon. We didn't watch TV, we didn't watch movies. Uh, we spent a lot of time outside and took uh, our daughter to the playground a lot and um, honestly it wasn't that bad but we definitely screwed up. One day my husband went to get lunch for us and came back with sushi from Whole Foods. I'd already put a delicious piece of inari in my mouth before I remembered I was consuming Amazon produced food. I wasn't willing to purge for the sake of the stunt. Another time I unintentionally patronized Amazon was when I ordered a phone holder for my car. Oh, I'll order through eBay. Like that should be pretty easy. There were a lot of choices there. I ordered one, it was like $17 um, and it came and it came in this package. Turns out the seller uses fulfillment by Amazon. <sighs> but some challenges were unexpected, like not being able to use the encrypted messaging app Signal to contact sources. And of course, Slack the workplace communication platform, which is basically how I keep in touch with my colleagues on the other coast since I work remotely. At my work, Slack has replaced meetings, phone calls, and definitely email. I sent emails to colleagues, but it seemed like most of them went into a black hole. Drew kept track of all the times my devices tried to ping Amazon servers during the week. Your devices collectively reached out to Amazon close to 300,000 times. Uh, Seems like a lot. Like, yeah, it's a lot. But so there's many Amazon services I use in a given week that we didn't capture, that I just stopped using. With whatever was connected in your house, Amazon still did find a way. Like over, you know, at night, you could see Amazon being pinged a few times throughout the night. <gasps> oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it was clear that a permanent Amazon ban would wall me off from crucial services and key websites that I just can't function without for both personal and professional reasons. It seems like Amazon just runs the infrastructure of the web and there's just, there's like no alternative when you're blocking Amazon. These companies are following us around whether we know it or not for that reason. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't think I could cut Amazon for my life. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Next up, Facebook. <laughs> 